How's it going guys? Cody back again dropping you another video. Right guys, this is a story on the North Wales Live. Link in the description below like we always do. It's about a female who travelled a hell of a long way to smuggle drugs into HMP Berwyn. Yes, that shit all in Berwyn in Wrexham, North Wales. Um, I'm just going to read the story and I'm going to do my bit at the end like we always do. Uh, headline reads... Berwyn prison in crisis, says judge, as he jails woman for spice supply. Judge Nicholas Parry said the prison's ethos was being undermined by drugs and violence. Drugs have plunged Wales' biggest prison into crisis, a Crown Court judge said today. HMP Berwyn had been set up with the best of intention, Judge Nicholas Parry said, but those were being undermined by people who bought drugs into it. He also cited in discipline violence against staff and bullying in the jail, which opened in 2017. It had been intended to be the most progressive prison in the UK, with prisoners called men rather than inmates, and phones and computers in each of the rooms, which were not referred to as cells. But contraband materials being brought in from all over the country, Judge Parry said today, as he jailed a woman who had been prepared to make a 300 round mile trip to deliver spies to the 250 million Wrexham compound. Glynis Bevan, 48, of Riverside Drive, Benarvon, admitted possession with intent to supply and supplying sheets of synthetic cannabinoids, said to have a value of £5,550 in prison. Take that with a pinch of salt, guys. They like to bump it up, even by prison prices. Judge Parry told um, Mole Crown Court heard that Bevan, who had previous convictions for 207 offences, had been used by others more sophisticated than her after inheriting her former partner's drug debt when he was jailed. Judge Parry jailed her for 10 months, concurrent with the sentence she's already serving for shoplifting. Sentencing Bevan, he told her, the reality is that, as in South Wales, here in North Wales, drugs in prisons are causing real problems. Berwyn has a very large prison set up in the North Wales with all the best intentions in the world but has been reduced to a place of indiscipline, violence, attacks upon staff and bullying, all because drugs are being fought over. Such was the industry to get drugs into the prison. She was making a 300, round, 300 mile round trip. It was aggravated by her utterly appalling criminal record. A guilty pleas would mean a greatly reduced sentence. She has no previous convictions for supplying drugs and the judge said he accepted that she was vulnerable and had been used by others. But you did go in knowing full well what the risks were, he said. Prosecuting barrister Ryan Rothwell for the CPS said that in September of last year, officers at HMP Berwyn in Wrexham were immediately suspicious when the defendant entered the prison. A drugs dog had taken an interest in her. She was very nervous and when inmate Carl Hitch Mao, 50, entered the visiting room, he walked past her and clearly did not know her. He then turned back and embraced her and they kissed but she was seen to pass a package to him. The package was recovered from his underwear and it contained 19 sheets of A4 paper which had been soaked in synthetic cannabis. Drugs in prison had also led to violence and bullying and undermined all the rehabilitative work that has been undertaken, said the prosecutor. H. Mao was serving an 81-month sentence for possessing both heroin and crack cocaine with intent to supply, which was imposed at Plymouth in 2016 received a consecutive 12-month prison sentence at a hearing in August. Bevan was searched after her arrest and a second package was found in her underwear. Defending barrister David Pinnell said the client had turned to alcohol and cannabis to block out what she was taking place in her younger life. In her late 20s, she'd been introduced to heroin while serving a prison sentence and that's been a problem for the past 20 years. Her offending rate reduced when she lived in Blenarvon. But when she was in Swansea area, she had no realistic prospect of defeating her heroin problem. It was her intention to return to Blenarvin. She'd been in a relationship with another drug user, inherited his debt, and when he went to prison and she'd been used by others. People more sophisticated than her are behind this, he said. They realised that she had a blanket ban from attending prisons in South Wales, but did not extend to North Wales, which is why she used it in her capacity. She'd then been driven by two men and handed what she was told, packages of paper to deliver to HMP Berwyn. Um, lady with drug addiction um, that was obviously being... The more vulnerable somebody is, the more susceptible they are. And like I say, if somebody's in debt, apparently she incurred her ex-partner's debt 
it does go on as stupid as that fucking might sound um and to clear this debt she's obviously well out you, you, you'll take drugs in and she's done it probably against her will um she obviously didn't know the guy the guy obviously didn't know her that he was dropping it off to the fact he was obviously in for for possession with intent to supply class a um she she sat down in the visiting center like probably waiting right and he's walked straight past her because he don't know he's there to meet goes on and then obviously then he's like oh how you doing babe and he's give her a kiss which you just you could just hug somebody but she was obviously there to pass a parcel um and she was obviously nervous and she was scanning and stuff and in doing so her body language would have gave away that she was obviously there to pass over contraband now when it go when the judge goes on about violence in the prison and everything obviously the problem with getting drugs into a prison if you're a dealer and you are getting parcels into prison, drugs into prison, knowing how lucrative it is, because depending on the amount of drugs and like the class of the drugs and the amount of drugs and how much drugs are already in the prison, the price can fluctuate up and down, depending on like I've alluded to, if there's a drought on, if parcels have been intercepted. If you're the only person with a certain drug on a wing, let's say spice, which is spices everywhere. But if you're the only person with that particular drug, hypothetically speaking, you can charge a premium for it I've even seen bidding wars over bits of spice, balls of spice, right? Um, so yeah, it, it's it's if you're a, if you're a dealer and you're sat up here, right? You're buzzing. If you are, if you've got mental health issues or addiction problems in prison, right? You're already vulnerable, and then you're taking drugs on tap because your body needs the drugs. So you keep telling your dealer, yeah, yeah, I'll pay for it, I'll pay for it, I'll pay for it. The dealer may or may not give it you on tick, depending on if you pay them back in the past or if you've got money coming into the prison. Not everyone's got a support network and a loving family and a missus and a mother and a father and that's sending them money every week. Not every prison has got that. Um, a lot of people that with addictions in prison, some families pay out of duress, some don't, some cut the supply off, some haven't got the support network, but they keep saying, yeah, yeah, because they need the drug. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you what you want to hear. They'll steal from their own mother. They'll tell you, yeah, 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 I'll pay it, I'll pay it. So when you say, yeah, I'll pay it on this date next week, right? You, they give you the drug on tick. You don't pay next week. It gets doubled, tripled. It, it just gets fucking stupid. And then at some point, the prisoner just thinks, you know what? I'm just going to, I'll either fuck him up myself. If you say it's a cleaner and he's in a position of trust, he doesn't want to lose his job and be under investigation and lock behind himself for smashing him himself. So he could just say to another kid that's a spy said, I will give you a £20 bottle of spice, £50 bottle of spice, if you go in there and fuck him up. And drugs, just like money, talks. And that's what goes on. Um, but like I say, where you've got contraband in prison, you've got debt. Where you've got fear, you've got f fear, debt. You've got fear, intimidation, bullying and violence. Um, obviously, that undermines the, the role of the prison. Um no, no, they didn't bring anything about prison officers bringing drugs into the prison, which is a massive problem, guys. Well, when you hear stories about drugs getting into prison, unless it's a prison officer that's been caught, um, it doesn't. The, 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 when the media run these stories, they never, the judge never make oh prison officers bring it in. We know how it comes in. We know it comes through visits. We know it comes through drones. We know the ingenious way that prisoners get drugs into prison. But one of the main routes is prison officers and like i've said if you're if you're like if your loved ones in prison and they've got addictive tendencies right like i say personally i used to have a different opinion of drug users I used to think oh they, they choose to take it i actually see it for what it is now having been involved in the drug trade with heroin and crack cocaine selling it on the behalf running a national operation many many moons ago the drug which is disgusting and i'm ashamed of that because drugs kill people and it fuels the cycle of crime i only see that when you step away from it when you're involved in it you can't see the wood for the trees so like it's part of a much bigger problem and i think that a lot of people take substances alcohol drugs things like that to block out memories it's a coping mechanism for horrific things that have happened in their childhoods growing up rape sexual abuse sexual assault care leavers just pass from pillar to post and everything else you could ever experience right but like i say if you, the amount of people i've seen in prison when drugs are in the jail and the the havoc that drugs cause with the debt the fear the intimidation the violence the bullying um and you see the people that are using these drugs 
a lot of them have got mental health issues a lot of them have got might have asperger's syndrome and things like that or they're just weak individuals and i don't mean that disrespectfully and it's just sad to see it really really is um this woman's been jailed like i said 207 offenses she can't really complain can she but this is obviously a woman that was obviously in severe debt um, probably needed money to, to fuel her drugs or she got a load of drugs on tap and then said right time to pay up bam 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 she's gone to the prison with parcels when it says it's worth five thousand five hundred fifty pounds um i've heard a four sheets of paper uh 50 pound a line for for one so you've got imagine a line piece piece of it piece of the a4 paper get me words out uh one one single strip would be worth 50 pound i've heard that in jail i've seen it in jail um again depends on how much drugs are about synthetic cannabis is being sprayed onto anything i've heard of clothes uh, dressing gowns paper legal documents rule 39 letters etc etc which are not supposed to be opened and i've seen people get spies for get it in because like i say you've got to think how lucrative once it crosses the threshold into the prison the price goes up massively and it's very lucrative and i get people i get why it's so lucrative and i get why people are obviously keen to get the drugs in but it's the people at the bottom that i feel sorry for i genuinely do and when you look at mental health and you look at uh, self-harm and you look at um, assaults in prison and record levels of violence year on year record levels of self-harm um, and the amount of sheer suicides in prison there are people that are in prison that are in fear of the consequences of drug debts and I personally believe they've taken their own life I've heard stories from families that have paid thousands of pounds where they're paying money into bank accounts they're getting menacing phone calls from inside jails and withheld numbers from their loved ones and they're getting smashed up and they can hear it and they're being put on loudspeaker and the families are hearing and getting attacked saying you better fucking put that money, this amount of money in. This is the sort code, this is the account number, pay it in. And it goes on guys, it, it's it's very sad to see. Uh, but Berwyn's beset by problems when it before it even opened its doors. If you look back through my, t through my videos, um, you will see that I said that this prison super prison super in only its size and it's failing guys let's get it right we'll have we'll be beset by the same problems every other prison as by calling prisoners men and by calling uh, a cell a room prisoners i know i know for the most part prisoners are uneducated but fucking hell we're not stupid and this soft this silly fucking softly softly approach doesn't work i'm not saying be hard on prisoners but saying oh you go back to your room that's not a cell that's a room you're, you're, you're a man. You're not a prisoner. Prisoners are still locked behind the door for sustained amounts of time, away from the friends, away from the family, away from the children, away from the loved ones, right? Don't know what's happening outside the cell door, outside the landing, outside the wing, outside the jail, right? <laughs> but but there's some fucking high-class, highly educated prick is like, oh, so we call them men, and this is, it's not a, it's not a wing, it's a community, and this is, a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a cell, it's a room, I don't fucking, prisoners, we might be thick on educated kids, but we're switched on and we're not fucking stupid. We don't fall for that shit. And it's not re, that's not going to re-engage anyone and you can't normalise a prison environment. Simple as that, guys. I'm all about Berwyn. I don't, I don't like it. I'm down on the jail. I've heard shocking fucking stories from prisoners from near far. I've spoken to girlfriends of prisoners from the prison. I've spoken to mothers from uh, of, of prisoners from the prison. I've spoken to prisoners serving time at the jail. Um, prisoners, I've spoken to the uh, a son of a, a prisoner called Michael Quinn Sr., um, who sadly and tragically passed away at uh, HMP Berwyn early this year. God bless him. May he rest in peace. Uh, there was another prisoner called Luke who died uh, due to spice. Uh, my heart and my thoughts and prayers go out to his family. The, the fact is, guys, Berwyn is just a, a big, expensive waste of time and money. Um, and the fuck ups out of that jail. Um, it's just been, a, it's supposed to be progressive. If anything, guys, it's just like every other prison. So, brand new prison, a few years old, heating's broke in the jail. They didn't even, apparently, they haven't even got a medical wing within the prison. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard from people that I've spoken to. They haven't got a medical wing within the prison. New bill prison, guys. Someone's shitting me. Uh, but like I say, guys, uh, Berwyn, an expensive prison that's failing prisoners um, and prisoners' families. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.